Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a Bible study podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Thank you for joining us. We want to thank all of you that are sending in making comments. Thank you for hitting like on the, uh, on the uh, screen in front of you. And please don't forget to share this. We're trying to get this word out to as many people as possible. Now, Karen, my cohort, my better half, is not with us today. She's up in Canada, and I'm in Florida, and I'm doing a, still doing the book tour. Uh, this week, uh, we just did some podcasts with different uh, TV studios, and we had a one-hour interview in Bradenton, Florida, with Jonathan Kahn, which we're hoping will be edited for the next week or so. But we had a one-hour interview with Jonathan Kahn on his book, The Return of the Gods. And Jonathan Kahn is tracking right alongside with Prophecy USA with, with what we think is coming. If America doesn't come back to God, we're in big trouble. And, of course, we've been teaching this for the last three years, right out of this book. We've been following the prophets in this book. And uh, we just finished a 15-minute interview uh, just a little while ago, uh, with Cornerstone TV out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're going to play that 15-minute segment at the end uh, of this podcast. We're just going to clip it on. Chris is going to do that. So last week, I just want to go over a bit. Last week, we discussed the office of the, prophet, office of the prophets and the divisions that are happening now among them in North America. Uh, recently, Mario Morello, who is an evangelist in the States, has a huge tent ministry and healing ministry, started calling out certain prophets who are claiming that they've been to heaven, more than Apostle Paul, uh, who he said himself was called up to heaven in 2 Corinthians 12, 13. Now, Paul said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such a one caught up to the third heaven. So Paul said that it's possible to be caught up to the third heaven. And he said, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire the, to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, Paul said a thorn was given in his flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet him, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, uh, you have to understand, Paul experienced this, and it is possible to be caught up into heaven. That is a, that's a very possibility. Of course, John the Revelator, who wrote the book of Revelations, which we study, he also was caught up to heaven. And from that experience, he wrote the book of Revelation. John said in Revelation 4.1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in the heavens, and the voice which I heard, like a trumpet talking with me, said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now, this is in Revelation 4, 1. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a, as jasper and sarding stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Remember, the rainbow was what God gave Noah as a sign of the covenant that he would never destroy the earth again with a flood. John says, and round about the throne were 24, were four and 20 seats, and upon the seats I saw four and 20 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. 
So folks, these are very deep things. They're mysterious things. And there's always caution to test when people say that they've had these experiences, including the experiences that I've had that birthed this ministry in 1986, uh, where I had, an, I had an experience that I just could not understand until I dug into this book and I found out that there were people in the, in the Bible 2,700 years ago, like Isaiah and Jeremiah, who had exactly the same experience that I had. And so we want to test the spirits. We want to be gentle. But you have to test these things. And uh, as I watch other prophecy programs, I am seeing a turning away of America becoming great again to America coming under judgment. And this is what Jonathan Kahn warned us in our interview. Um, but those who predicted Trump would win are now turning a corner. And of course, you have to remember something. When these prophets or these people, these prophetic people, get it wrong and their words fall to the ground, they have no other choice but to start prophesying what everyone now is already seeing. And one particular prophet stated that judgment is now coming, but it's not coming to us. Before it was America's going to be great again, we're going to rise up. Now, now it's possible we're going to be judged. Uh, but it's only coming to those who disobey. However, a year ago, the word judgment would not even cross the lips of these people. Now, if God hasn't changed his mind on America, God has not said one thing is going to happen and then he changes his mind and then another thing, there has to be a consistency with a person who's prophesying. Uh, and of course, many of these people a year ago referred to anyone that was talking about judgment, including me, as a doom and gloomer. And they laughed. This is a covenant nation. God would never judge us. We're a covenant. Well, do they realize that is exactly what the false prophets said to Jeremiah, said to Isaiah, said to Ezekiel, said to Daniel? And these prophets continually today talk about America's covenant but they refused to step over the line of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. For many of the prophets today, it's all about prosperity, blessings, covenant, and of course money. But they won't warn people of what is coming because they have no clue what is coming. Now, why can I say that? Because many of their prophecies cannot be backed by Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, or John. In other words, they're not speaking a word of faith. They're chanting a word of fake. They're prophesying something from the presumption of their heart, but it's not lining up with Scripture. Now, the reason I can say that, and I'm not going to name names, but last year at NRB, I walked around NRB and I listened to the different people being interviewed and one person there is today known as a prophet. And I listened to what he was saying and uh, I went up and I asked him a question. Now he was very nice, very nice man. And I said, do you think America's in scripture? And he said, well, you know, there's some people going around saying America's Babylon, but I just can't see that. Well, he's entitled to his opinion. Uh, he was very nice. He was very courteous. And in fact, he said to me, he says, you know, I really like your spirit. Well, I wasn't trying to catch him on anything. I just wanted to hear his opinion because I know what I've been called to teach. But that person now is starting to, to change back because a lot of the prophecies he gives is not, is not coming to pass. So anyone who states that America is not in the Bible, I am telling you right now, 
be leery of what they are teaching, and I mean anyone. Either America is in the Bible, or she's not in the Bible. If someone says she's not in the Bible, and she is in the Bible, they haven't done their homework. And if I'm saying America's in the Bible, and this isn't America, then I'm wrong. And of course, today, these, these former prophets who talked about America rising up and carrying the, the, the flag and doing all that, uh, they have no choice but to wake up and smell the coffee. Now, I want to reiterate something. I'm not against these people personally, but the word that they are speaking is not what the prophets warned us of what is coming in Scripture. Now, Jeremiah said this, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This is in uh, Jeremiah, uh, I believe it's 23, Jeremiah 23, um, 16, through 26. And this is what Jeremiah said. Thus said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And they say every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days... Folks, we're in the latter days. You shall consider it or understand it perfectly. Now notice he says that the whirlwind is going to come upon the wicked. That says to me, not upon the righteous. Those that have left covenant, like America, there's judgments coming and they're already here. In, in verse 21, the Lord further says to Jeremiah, I've not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I've not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said the Lord? Do not I fill the heaven and earth, said the Lord? I've heard what the prophets said. They prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Now, if those dreams do not come to pass, folks, that means it's not from the Lord. And God says, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Now, these modern-day prophets are not telling you to go worship Baal, but they're also not warning you about the Baal worship in the nation and what it will cause. Verse 28 says, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. So what is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, I'm against the prophets, says the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Somebody hears somebody say this, and then they just go and repeat it. Behold, I'm against the prophets, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, Thus saith the Lord. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, 
nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, set the Lord. Now that word lightness, it says they causes God's people to err by their lies and by their lightness. That word lightness means an indifference where seriousness and intention are called for. It's an indifference, it's a gaiety where seriousness and attention are called for. Dietrich Bonhoeffer had a prophetic word to the people at the time of Hitler's rising. It was a heavy word. It wasn't light, but no one would listen to it. This is the way the false prophets are in the Old Testament with Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel. And this is the way the false prophets today do not listen to this word. They're not picking up on what the prophet said concerning Babylon. That particular prophet that I talked to, he said, I don't, I don't believe Babylon's in the, I don't believe America's Babylon. Well, how can you prophesy about the future of Babylon if you don't even know the 53 descriptions that she's already fulfilled? You know, Prophecy USA so far is batting a thousand. We called and the COVID-19 would be used by the WEF to accelerate their agenda. Remember, never let a crisis go to waste. If you don't have a crisis, you create a crisis. Then you provide a solution so you can tell the people what to do. This is what they use COVID-19 for. It came right out of Justin Trudeau's mouth. And we also said that the WEF is forming the exact description of what the beast system will look like. Glenn Beck has just written a book. It's called The Great Recess. He talks about the beast system. He's saying everything that we said in our book that this thing is rising up. Now, Justin Trudeau is fulfilling his father's dream of a new world order. He's scaring people into submission in Canada through climate change, pandemics, and now they're talking about food shortages. This is everything we said three years ago. It's happening right now. So this is how you can track the words coming out of someone's mouth. If the thing comes to pass, that is the thing the Lord has spoken. Now, that doesn't mean we have all the answers. But folks, I'm telling you right now, and at the end of this um, session, we're going to talk about, they're going to ask me some questions, and we are in Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right now, and there's things coming yet that we're watching. For example, there is a digital currency coming and a redistribution of wealth in the world. Uh, I just listened to a financier that's been in the, in the markets for the last 25 years and he's talking about the digital financing that they're, they're starting to create over 80 nations. This is all a forerunner of the beast and what they will do with the mark of the beast. Now Prime Minister Trudeau in Canada right now is meeting with all the premiers to approve a digital passport. That digital passport will be connected to your health, health card, it'll be connected to your banks, and all the banks in Canada right now are World Economic Forum members. You go to the bank and you can see the Environmental Social Guidance, ESG governance, and each bank is, is, is matching themselves by stakeholder um, what they call stakeholder, how are they doing with regards to the environment and social equity, and they're getting a score. This is happening right now. It's here. It's not coming. Folks, the thing is sliding a lot faster than I anticipated, but we have been on this, and we're not changing track. Judgment is not coming. It's already started. The technology is being formed, and the World Economic Forum is even saying it from their own lips. We're going to have a one-world government. Now, we've said that Babylon would rot from within. 
the FBI and the CIA have already now, if you watch Fox News and you listen, they've been used as a political weapon to tell Twitter and Facebook who to, who to uh, uh, blank out, who to silence, stopping free speech. The Grammy Awards just last week had a full-blown satanic worship service. Folks, 20 years ago, that would have been unheard of. But there's more Satanists now in America than there are Presbyterians. So we're not trying to scare people, but we're trying to warn you. It's happening. We're living in a Latter-day Nation called Babylon. These prophecies are being fulfilled. God has a covenant with you. He will protect you. But there may be some bumpy spots going along the way here. Now in Canada, Bill C-11 just passed. It was introduced with amendments as the Online Streaming Act during the first session of the 44th Canadian Parliament in February 2022. It passed in the House of Commons in June 21st of 2022, and it passed the Senate February 2nd, 2023. This is a restriction of free speech on the internet. And now the Trudeau government is trying to initiate a digital passport among all the provinces. They have spent $100 million with the World Economic Forum, the coming beast, and it will be inputting your banking, your health card, your finances, and it will have an ESG score. It will monitor your environmental and your social uh, guidelines and what you're doing. And if you don't do, eventually, if you don't do what they say, they will cut off your health benefits, they will freeze your bank accounts, and they'll probably even take your driver's license. This is all forming what the Bible says is the mark of the beast. You cannot buy or sell. So these things are all happening. And when these prophets, false prophets, don't even acknowledge this stuff, and they say, oh, we're going we're gonna to rule and reign, we're going to be saved, it doesn't say that in Scripture. It does not say that. It says this is coming. There's an exodus coming. Now, God will not pour out his wrath on his people. But we now have, in Canada, they're trying to initiate 15-minute cities. A 15-minute city means that when you live in a city, you can be 15 minutes away from groceries, 15 minutes away from a restaurant, and you can walk. Why do they want you to walk? Because they want to get rid of cars, unless you have an electric, electric car. They're taking away your freedom to travel. If somebody's outside of the district, you might have to show your digital passport in order to get out of your district, which will be a neighborhood. This is all part and parcel, like the frog in the, in the, in the water, and it's heating up, and you can see, you can see through the veil, you can see what's coming, Justin Trudeau will do to you exactly what he did to the truckers if you don't obey what they say. These people are ruthless. They're not for democracy. They're for dictatorship. These are the global elites that we warned you about in chapter 4 in our book. Now, the good news is we have a coming exodus, folks. There is an exodus. And meanwhile, in Kentucky right now, there is a fresh wind blowing in Babylon among the youth. God is responding to the darkness. So this, this revival that we're seeing, it's going to continue. The light's going to get brighter. The dark's going to get darker. And the separation is happening right now. Jeremiah 51, 14 says, And behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. When you have a satanic worship service on national TV, that's Babylon rising up and striking out against God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, God's watching this, and he has a remnant. 
You and I are part of the remnant. And he says, I will send into Babylon fanners that shall fan her. Now, a fanner is somebody that throws the wheat up in the air and the wind comes and it separates the wheat and the chaff. And it says, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. Folks, you and I are one of those caterpillars. And they shall lift up a shout against thee, against Babylon. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with rain and he brings forth the wind out of his treasures. Folks, what we need to do is not be afraid of Babylon. We need to let other people know what's going on. Study to show thyself approved and don't be afraid to let others know what's going on. Now, share, one of the ways you can help is share this podcast with other people because the Holy Spirit is moving now in America. He's especially reaching out to the youth. That means your, your grandchildren, your children, those people in university, these kids have been raised in darkness. They've been not denied the light of the gospel in, in the schools. They have been denied prayer in the schools and they've been taught this woke, this woke mentality that is part of the Babylonian system. So I can't encourage you enough. I want to thank all of you who are supporting us financially. Thank you for praying for us. We are going against the grain. We are swimming upstream. And we are fighting the darkness at Prophecy USA, and we're winning. And we intend to keep winning. <laughs> but part of the way we're spreading the word is going to different TV stations, and they're asking us questions. And then I've got some special guests like Jonathan Kahn that I'm trying to line up, and I want them to come on. But I'm not going to have every Tom, Dick, and Harry that I interview to come on and bloviate. I want people that are hearing what I'm hearing but most of all are locked into this scripture. And some people have revelation that I haven't got. I want to hear from them because that's what God has done with apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. We all need each other. And if somebody you think is prophesying wrongly, don't hate the person. Maybe they're trying their best, but they're a little bit off. Love them, but you don't have to listen to them. And this is, what, uh, this is what I'm trying to get through today in this lesson. We want to walk in kindness, walk in love, but stay in this word and study to show thyself approved. And as God moves in this ministry, he's going to open doors and this word's going to go out either through my lips or somebody else's lips. But I guarantee you a year from now, a lot of people are going to be talking that America's Babylon. But remember, it came first here, came from other people like uh, David Wilkerson. But uh, we're sticking with this. We're sticking fast to this word. And I want you to enjoy this um, interview that I had with Tom Hollis from Cornerstone Church or Cornerstone CTVN in Pittsburgh. He interviewed me a year ago. And now the things that we talked about back then is happening right now. And I can tell that Tom is getting his eyes open and they're very, very happy with our show, uh, Prophecy USA, because we have stuck so close to scripture. We're going to hand you over right now to Tom Hollis at Cornerstone Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you are there. In the midst of the rumblings and the shakings and the chaos and the darkness that we're seeing in the world, God is in the center of it all. And that is our greatest hope. And we're so glad you're joining us for Hope today because we're gonna have a really special conversation talking about how God is moving all around the world, things that we're seeing, biblical prophecy. Tom, tell us what's coming up. 
Yeah, uh, you know, when you think about it, that was a great intro, Sydney, because really, what is going on in the world? We see all these things. We see the, you know, we see what's going on in Ukraine and in Russia, with the Middle East, so many different areas where there is trouble. And we wonder where, where do we stand in God's end times calendar? And, and closer to home, what's going on in this country? And where is America in biblical prophecy? Is America in biblical prophecy? Well, with us today is Rick Pearson of Prophecy USA. You see his program on Sunday evenings and uh, he's gonna be sharing with us about America, Babylon, and end time prophecy. Guys, you gotta stay. I'll give you the, I'll give you the, he's gonna talk about America being Babylon. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to talk about that and share with us what he's seeing in the scriptures and what he's seeing in America. It's going to be you know, great. It's no mystery that one of the most intriguing and studied books of the Bible is Revelation and its relation to end times prophecy. That's what it's all about. What, it, it, what really is a mystery, though, is that, uh, you know, what's America's role in Bible prophecy? You're not going to find the word America in there, but TV host and author Rick Pearson, he's our next guest, and in his new book, The Coming Exodus, he shares what he believes is a much needed wake up call for America about what scripture says is happening and what is still to come. Rick, welcome back to Hope Today. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Tom. Well, you know, uh, the subtitle of your book is uh, Unveiling America's Future, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, tell me, before we go into uh, how we're seeing uh, Babylon in this current age, Tell me about what is Babylon scripturally? I mean, we know about the ancient country of Babylon, the nation of Babylon, but that's used in Revelation and used in prophecy. How, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the word Babylon means confusion. And there are, there are two Babylons in the end times. One is a religious Babylon. The other is a commercial Babylon. Religious Babylon has to do with Baal worship, it has to do with uh, sacrificing of children to Moloch. But there is a commercial Babylon that appears before the Antichrist rises and before the New World Order comes in. And we believe at Prophecy USA that the United States of America, if you wonder what in the world is happening to our country, we have found out what in the word is happening to our country these Babylonian spirits are rising up here and manifesting. Well, share with us then some of those prophetic things in the scriptures where America is fitting right in and fulfilling those. Okay, first of all, uh, she's called Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery is the word Mysterian. It means uh, a secret revealed to a select group of people, and I like to say it's a secret revealed to a chosen generation. In Revelation, or Jeremiah 51, 7, Babylon originally is raised up by the hand of the Lord. He says she's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. And she's the seventh of eight providential nations according to Revelation 17, 10. Now I'm just gonna read some scriptures off here. Revelation 17, 3, and four, she's the wealthiest of all nations. In Isaiah 47 and five and Revelation 17, she is recognized by the world with the symbol of a woman. Of course, we have the Statue of Liberty and the seven spikes on her head. When that, when that statue was originally designed, those spikes were to represent the seven continents of the earth. Babylon sits on the seven mountains of the earth. And Babylon is used to hold down the Antichrist spirit. So you have America that was raised up by God that sent the gospel out, one nation under God, the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, heritage of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is, uh, she becomes the richest of all the nations. The merchants of the earth trade with her in Revelation 18, 17. And she actually trades 27 different products that are already listed. So she's a nation that has many, many ports. The merchants of the earth come and trade. She's the richest of all nations. But religious Babylon gets in to commercial Babylon, according to scripture, and she starts falling into darkness. This is what we're seeing today. We have taken the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit We've taken them out of government, out of schools, 
the prayer out of school, and that's been replaced by what Jonathan Kahn calls is the dark trinity, which is the spirit of Baal, the spirit of Ashtoreth, yeah. and the spirit of Moloch, which is the shedding of innocent blood. So this is what we believe that we're seeing right now, the transition as Babylon falls into darkness. But inside of Babylon is a remnant of people. And God says, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins, nor in the plagues that shall come. So as Babylon breaks her covenant with God, it doesn't mean that the remnant inside of her breaks their personal covenant with God. And that's where we're at today, right now on the prophetic time clock. Well, let me, let me ask you about some of those things where religious Babylon is pulling America down and we're falling into those things. You mentioned three spirits there. Could you unpack those a little bit of where, oh. where those things are happening in America? Okay, Baal worship has to do with immorality. It has to do with sexual immorality. Um, Ashtoreth has to do with, that's the female counterpart of Baal. Now this all originated in ancient Babylon with Nimrod. But Baal is the male counterpart of this god of fertility. Ashtoreth is the second female part. And what they did is they put a pole in the ground in ancient Babylon, carved it in the shape of a woman, and then they had orgies, both men and women, both priests, men with men, women with women, around these poles. Now, in America today, we don't have any poles carved in women, but we have 3,500 strip clubs in the nation with live women hanging off them, and men come and they throw their money. So this is a form of Ashtoreth worship. And then the third part of that dark trinity is Moloch. When you have immorality and you have a nation fall into this darkness, they have children that they don't want. Then they start sacrificing their children to Moloch. And the number one reason they sacrifice children to Moloch in the Old Testament is because they thought they would receive a financial blessing. The number one cause for abortion today is people who don't think they can afford to raise a child. So here we have the dark trinity of Babylon, Mr. Babylon, the religion. And if people don't come back to God, God will judge that because he judged Israel, the covenant nation, all through history when they entered into Baal worship. So our job at Prophecy USA is to call people to come back to Jesus, come back to God, and, and come out of the sin and get into covenant with God because we feel that judgment is coming to America. Rick, just really appreciate how you're breaking down the dark trinity. For some people, it's probably the first time they've ever heard of it or trying to comprehend and understand it. And just, you know, what you're seeing and what you're on the prophetic timeline, what is coming next for America? Because I think a lot of times with prophecy, we want it to feel good. We want to hear prosperity, but there's a real, there's a truth and there's real things that God has in store for America. Can you tell us about that? I think uh, I asked Oral Roberts this uh, several years ago, uh, six months before he died, and he said, Rick, I believe that there's going to be a separation between the wheat and the chaff. And right now what you're seeing is God is pouring out his spirit uh, in Kentucky and in different regions, and he's reaching out to the young people, and he's saying, come to me, come back to me, let me love you, let me protect you. There's going to be gross darkness and also a bright light shining. And that's the separation of the wheat and the chaff. You know, when you look at the Grammys and you see open Satan worship right on television, this would have never happened 15 or 20 years ago, but now it's the norm. And so the nation, there's a separation coming and the light of the gospel will get brighter. I believe we will see a move of signs and wonders, very similar of what is happening uh, in Kentucky, but the darkness is going to get darker. And just like Pharaoh and the Exodus, it said that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and did signs and wonders before he judged Pharaoh 
and before the exodus came for the children of Israel to flee out of the bondage. Rick, what does the, uh, what does the average Christian, I mean, maybe we're not in Kentucky, we're not in the, in the revival right now, we're not in, what do we do? What's our response to this? Here we are in America, in many ways still feeling the blessings of prosperity here and, and, and various you know, blessings of freedom that are still remnants here. But what do we do as Christians with this uh, in view of what you're sharing? Uh, I, I think the number one thing is to strive to be like Paul. Paul said that the life of Christ might be made manifest in me. You know, get back into the word, study the word, have communion with God, get close to him and listen for that still small voice to be used as a vessel of kindness, of helping others, and stay close to God because there's a second mystery, not only mystery Babylon the Great, but there's a mystery when Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed instantly. When Jesus comes to rapture the church, we want to be ready for that. So you want to be involved uh, with the body of Christ, a body of believers, and, and ask God to show you on a daily basis, can, how, who can I be kind to? Can I help someone here? Uh, be the best employee you can be, be the best father you can be, be the best mother you can be, be the best daughter or son you can be, and just stay in this word and let this word come alive inside of you. That's, that's on an individual basis because we cannot control what is happening in Bible prophecy. God said, I have spoken it, I will also do it, I have purposed it, and I will bring it to pass. You just want to make sure that you're walking close with Jesus. And that's, that's the best advice I could give to anyone. I could just love that advice because really our truly our highest calling is to look and reflect like Christ in all the earth, whether we're here in America or Middle East or wherever it may be. And just want to ask, you know, I know we have a few minutes left back in this segment, but can you just talk to us for a moment? What is going on? We're seeing a lot of rumblings and shakings in the Middle East and different parts of the world. So what is God even doing in that part of the region? I think that's birth pangs of what's to come. And it's coming to America. It's not going to stay over there. But America right now has fallen into uh, several curses. We don't have time to go into it. But since the Biden administration take over, we've had our walls fall down. Our walls are down. We have 5 million people come in. Um, we're, we're in debt, a debtor nation. We should be a lender nation if we're in the blessing. Um, and then, of course, in Afghanistan, they left their people there, and, and we fled from a little Taliban army. The strongest, most powerful nation in the history of the world runs from a Taliban army while they say, death to America. So um, when I'm watching what's happening over there, my calling is, is basically North America, but these are birth pangs of the Antichrist rising and, and you see darkness all around the world, uh, and the darkness is also here happening, but we don't have to live in the darkness. We can live in the light. And Paul said, for those of you who are troubled, rest with us. Um, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall appear with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But instantaneously, when Babylon's judgment comes, we will be taken out. That is the exodus that's coming. So we want to be rapture ready. We want to be as close to God as we can. We want to walk in kindness and love and fulfill whatever calling that God has for you. Get close to God and stay under his, his covering. And the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And that's what we need to do. So all of this that's happening around us are birth pains of what happens when the world rejects God and the darkness rises. I like that term, rapture ready. We need shirts to say that right on here. Rapture ready. Uh, uh, we, we've got to be rapture ready. ready. Let me ask you this, and I don't want you to overcommit yourself here and just... But people are going to say, well, when, how close are we? 
when is this happening? Obviously, you're not going to predict the date. I hope you don't anyway. But, uh, no. you know, what is your thoughts on how far along the prophetic calendar we are? Well, the new world order is rising, and that is the beast, what they want to do. We can see the eighth nation rising. We can see the seventh nation, which is Babylon the Great. We are falling into darkness. Nobody knows the day or the hour. Um, I don't put any prophetic time clock on this, but I will say this. I received this revelation 36 years ago. And we're 36 years closer to the second coming than when I received it. <laughs> That's the best I can do, Tom. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but we can certainly see the signs of the times around us. Amen. Well, thank you, Rick. Rick Pearson from Prophecy USA. His new book is The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Rick, you have given us a lot to think about, a lot to pray about, and a lot to be ready for. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Tom.